Um, I'm going to take 15 minutes or so just to try and give you a bit of a run through of really what I do and why. <coughs> why I've gone out on this mission to try and organise this kind of thing on my own and work with the partners I do and try and grow in what I think is a phenomenally interesting part of the investment. I've also got to try and find somewhere that I can stand and read the slides. Because normally I would have a laptop in front of me, but not today. It's not the way things are going to go today, is it? So, um, a little bit of a background to myself then, starting off. Uh, started out with financial services in 89, started off as a trainee broker consultant, working at MPI, then moved across to Friends Provident, um, basically saying to them that they weren't doing enough on the SRI ethical, sustainability, whatever side, and that I wanted a job doing that. Within 18 months of me going there, they created that job for me, which had never been done before, and I became ethical investment marketing consultant and then head of the SRI side at Friends Provident. I was there for 12 years. Um, 2008 then happened, and I went from, if you like, doing what was effectively my dream job, because not only was I looking after the stewardship stuff, which at that time was 50% share of the retail market, I was also on the board, I'd been hopped onto the board of UXIF to create a retail programme, so we'd started off what then became Good Money Week, as you know now, and I was also running the, the platform side of things on the SRI side at Friends, which meant that I had the opportunity to bring in other people's funds. So I could then call in those funds that I thought added real diversity and added something to it. Because I've always believed that no one solution has got all the answers. So even back then, back in 2008, firmly of the view that fund managers needed to come together to offer a variety of options that will help to meet individual investors' needs. I've just realised I've been writing notes of things I want to say, and obviously I never work from notes, so I'm in struggle. Um, but yeah, so this is very much about encouraging diversity in this market. Um, but if I can just take a step back, the obvious things I've forgotten, feedback forms, and also for anyone who needs some CPD forms, are around. And there's an agenda which has got a list of all the people, not that one, it's a draft one, but you've got a list of who everyone is, so they're on your seat, so do, do hang on to them. So use them, give comments, feedback as you can. So that's a little bit of my background. So I then moved into deciding I was going to set up my own website. I created SRI Services, which was effectively a brain dump with a load of generic information. Because I used to do loads and loads of training and I was out and about talking to financial advisors all the time. And it struck me there wasn't going to be anyone really doing that anymore. Um, there are people like Alliance Trust and loads of events. And I know others of you are also now doing events, which is fantastic. But I wanted to create a neutral hub so we could just celebrate the good things about the different options around. From then, that then developed the idea that was coming out really of the UPSIF work I was doing which is you've got to help people to understand this market. People don't understand it. There's way too much jargon. There's a load of variety. Journalists and whoever like to say ethical, not ethical, green, not green, far too simplistic, doesn't work, leads to complaints, leads to criticism, leads to people thinking that the investment industry is just ridiculous, when actually we're not. We're responding to the diverse needs of diverse clients. So. <laughs> Oh, sorry, that was all sorts of pictures there and some stuff I've done recently. If anyone's interested, I've recently written a paper for CII, which is on their website. Um, SRI, Environmentally, Socially and Financially Useful. 30-person um, guide with Panacea that I've done recently and various articles. This stuff is all on my website. Links to it. So then, looking at what I think is going on in the retail market generally. <coughs> Simon touched on this earlier, which is why I'm not going to go through a load of detail on the stats and what we think the market size is. But we know that screened and ethical funds, when we're talking about very specific funds with those strategies, are something like 1% of the market. Now, I don't know what you all think, but I simply don't think, even with this morning's results, that 99% of people don't care about this sort of stuff. <coughs> I don't believe that's right. We've seen massive growth into the trillions of dollars in, from things like UNPRI, institutional investors backing the need for integrating environmental, social and governance issues into the investment process. So institutional investors got access to it, by and large retail investors know very little about this area. They may say they're aware of funds, but their opportunity to invest in these areas is quite limited because the uh, information hasn't been there. We've then seen the growth of the diverse, uh, the diverse movement, impact investment, there's real groundswell coming up 
now from individuals, often driven by quite young people who perhaps don't know the first thing about the investment markets, never mind, a lot of noise being made. As Simon was saying earlier, I think now is our time. We are seeing so much support for the need to do things differently in the investment world. I think this represents a massive opportunity for all of us in the room. On top of that, we've got people like Mark Carney, people like, um, well, Nicholas Stern, so Nicholas Stern did a speech about 10 days ago talking about climate change, 10 years on from his report. We are talking terrifying figures. Donald Trump may be a climate change denier. I'm certainly not. Turns out from reading Nicholas Stern's report the other day, we are putting out 20% more, and then one speaker might be able to correct me if I'm a little bit out, 20% more CO2 equivalent emissions now than we were in 2005. We are currently on track for a 5 to 10 metre sea level rise by the end of this century. Now, on the one hand, that is absolutely terrifying because that means most of our major cities will be sunk. But on the other hand, in the interim, and I think there is still time to do something about it, it's a whopping great opportunity for investors because the only thing that's going to solve this is going to be investment in change, investment in new infrastructure, investment in companies that are actually understanding sustainability issues like climate change better. And basically making change happen. And with or without leadership from the states, that will come. As, as things happen, that will come. So looking at this market as a whole, you've heard from a really diverse range of fund management groups today. I've tried to stick true to my theme, screened, themed and engaged. So you hopefully will have heard a good amount on all of those areas. Can I have a nod? Did, did you get the whole? <laughs> okay, hopefully people stuck to, <laughs> stuck to the remits I gave you. Um, and what you will have seen from them is that you've got a real spread really relating to these four categories as I see it. Environmental, social, governance and ethical, which is where this all came from. Overlay that with the different strategies that different fund managers take. You can support good companies, you can go and look for your wind farms or whatever, or even the companies that are just better than the, the equivalent, um, maybe best of sector type options. And then you can engage for change. I mean, this is not an area where fund managers ought to be sitting back and not worrying about these things. They ought to be talking to companies, especially the biggest players, because they've got the real clout. Smaller fund managers, I would say, lead the way. Obviously, there's loads of really good things that can be done. But you know, everyone's got to work together to do their bits that they can to both meet client needs and to affect the kind of changes that, we're, that we really do need to see over the coming years. But this diversity, of course, is challenging. So if you're an investment advisor or organising portfolios, there's a baffling array of things. There's the whole sustainability agenda. There's the stranded assets talk and what Mark Arney's saying on the front there about. And Naomi touched on earlier, stranded assets, old companies, what would they really be worth in a few years' time? You've got the likes of Tesla, you've got Fossil Free, there's lots of different stuff. So what I've tried to do, it would be even better if the clicker worked. Touch the screen. I've tried to pull it all together, because if you try and plot all of this lot, bringing in the financials, the ethical issues, the social issues, try and plot it all in together in one thing, it becomes really complicated. Fair enough if you're the size of MSCI or something, <coughs> yes maybe. But what I've tried to do is say, look, I've got this knowledge. I've been in this market 25 years. I know that if you try and plot this, you're going to get in trouble. <coughs> and you land up in mud, wading through toffee, whatever you like. Real trouble if you try and do it all yourselves. So my two pennies worth for this market is to say, right, how does it really all look? And try and put my IFA hat on, financial advisor I should say now hat on and just think about the, the questions and the problems and the criticisms and the opportunities and all the good things that I've seen over the previous 20 years and I know there's different people coming up with different classifications but this is what I think fits within the remit of what we call sustainable responsible investment this is the SRI world as I see it <coughs> you've got those companies like I know Naomi spoke a little bit about earlier ESG integration, where what they're doing is just building those issues into their core investment strategies. You've got those which are really keen on responsible ownership, they're voting their shares of AGMs. And then you come down to your th themed and screened funds. 
sustainability theme is obviously a massive theme. The purpose of this triangle, <coughs> we tried to shape it in terms of the breadth of investment opportunity and how many companies, what percentage of the market someone could invest in with these strategies, theoretically. So at the very top, ESG integration, that is absolutely across the board. You can do that for every company. Responsible ownership, probably a smaller number of people are likely to serve, but realistically anyone can do responsible ownership work. Sustainability, you've got every sector to look at, because all sectors are going to have to shift in that direction. Some will be more successful than others. And then you've got ethically balanced, which is one of my ethical classifications. Now I know this is something that quite a lot of people struggle with, because it's a new term, and no one else who's looking at these classifications is coming up with anything like this. The reason is because with my, with my friend's hat on, I knew, and with some of the questions I get today from journalists and random people phoning me up, a lot of people think that ethical funds just avoid everything. Oh, it's ethical, it doesn't invest you know, in anything that could be remotely questionable. Oh, nonsense. Ethical funds are funds, they're investments, they're trying to get good performance. So they are going to invest widely, and there are going to be companies where the sector is perhaps undesirable, or some of what they do is undesirable, but on balance, they're pretty good companies. But chances are they're leaders in their sectors. And I've just changed the slide by leaning on it, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so, they're going to be the kind... Uh, hello. Great. So, they're quite different then. Not, not, this is an imperfect science, but they're quite different from those that I would say are negative ethical, where the real core criteria there is about avoidance. Now, with those funds, it's a lot easier to see where they don't invest because they are saying what they're excluding. So that's a different message for you. We've then got the environmental themed funds where it's really just looking at companies with very strong environmental strategies. Social themed funds, there's only a couple of funds in that area. Um, but that's a new emerging area and I think it's going to become very interesting. And then even fewer faith based funds. Um, but again, for those people where faith is a core motivation in their lives, in the way they behave and the decisions they make, those people should have the opportunity to invest in line with their faith. Important points at the bottom there, and see, and this clicker's really driving the bottom. Um, points at the bottom there are around the fact that there is diversity within the different styles, okay? It's not a precise science. So the, fun, the styles have different types of funds within them. What I've tried to do then is just give you a feel for the number of options in each of these. And what you see is that there is quite a broad spread. Negative ethical, a lot of funds in there. You've got funds like Keynes Funds, if you like, probably the oldest of the bunch. And you've got the ethically balanced funds. There's a lot of the people in the room today could be ethically balanced, and then there's the sustainability theme as well, running strongly through the people here today, environmental and faith based. So you've got a spread, as I say, quite a, few, a small number in the faith based. I'm going to flick through these quite fast because I'm aware we're running a bit late, okay? So bear with me and ask questions if, if you wish. So bear in mind you've got a mixture of asset types as well, because in the same way that people don't have the same ethical loans, they've got different investment objectives. Some are going to want to invest in bonds, others are going to want to invest in UK equities, others are going to want to invest in global equities. So it's really important that people understand there is an asset mix there. And that is the fundamental reason why I would say there's quite a lot of people who talk about the fact that we've got an ethical sector. We don't. You've got a flag funds as ethical. You can't be comparing a global equity fund and a UK bond fund in the same sector. It doesn't work. <coughs> benchmarking, we may not want to talk about benchmarking too much in retail because clients don't get it, but for a fund manager, you, you, know, you can't manage a fund like that. It doesn't make sense. Okay, so, um, as some of you may know this already, but as of mid-last week, I added an extra field onto my database site. Um, I created an area for corporate activity, so it came out of the other areas. So, on Fund Eco Market, I'll show you the home screen in a minute. You've probably seen it twice already. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got three additional filters. So beyond just looking at the styles, you can look in there and say, well, do, they, do this fund manager invest in this or this? What I haven't done is try to pretend that I'm Iris. I'm not. I'm me. I'm working on my own. Yes, I've got people working with me. Yes, I've got partners, etc. But I try and focus it in on what I know people most often ask about. And here are some examples of the kind of things that people say they have policies on. So, avoids tobacco, 38, and solve the numbers that we saw before. RSM rated, you've got the Rain Spencer Mills guide there. For those of you who know Rain Spencer Mills, they're using the financials on their work. I look at the ethical side for them, we work together on that. 
15 of the fund managers. We've, got, we've also got people here saying they're doing things like reviewing fossil fuel investments. Some funds like Unicorn don't invest in them anyway. Um, different motivations, different strategies, but possibly the most important number on this slide is the bottom one on the right. If you look at all of these, you know, someone tap, 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 I want all of these things. Zero. No single fund does all of these things, okay? Different funds meet different clients' needs, okay? So I think that's probably your take-home message. Diversity, very, very valuable, very useful, very important. So, this is what the home page looks like on Fund Econ Market. So as I said, my mission, following everything, <coughs> and given my passion for the area, and the fact that I was looking after platform stuff, so I knew quite a lot of environmental funds and others quite well, even going back 10 years, is say, so how do we bring this all together? So I've created this database, which has taken me, shall we say, quite a long time to pull together. And thank you to those fund managers who've contributed well, not only financially, but also data for it, because both are valuable. You can search by fund name, by product, by investment type, by SRI style, by SRI policy, by fund features, and by corporate strategy, corporate SRI-related strategy. <coughs> Some of the labels obviously I've had to keep quite short in order for them to fit in the field. There are explanations that sit next to these things. I'm gradually adding material to the help area, and more, more information will go on there over time but it's all written by me because I'm the one with the background in this area and can kind of explain it, so it'll take time to build. This incident was launched just last year as an event hosted kindly by Rathbones. Sorry, they have timed that badly for you to blow your nose. <laughs> Sorry, perfect milky. So, um, there's also a fact find questionnaire that sits within it, so if you're a financial advisor, you've got the option. You can go through a list of criteria and you can say, well, what are you interested in? Are you wanting to avoid this and support that and engage in that? And that's where you get that silly matrix snapshots and they're, and they're walking through toffee or mud um, slide. What this does is breaks the questions down into styles. So are you looking for a fund that does this kind of thing? Are you looking for a fund that avoids these particular issues? Um, are you looking for a fund that looks to engage with companies to encourage positive change? Um, are you looking for a fund that's, one of the words I use is faith friendly, because although there aren't very many faith based funds, there are actually quite a lot of uh, screened funds and, and other funds where Actually, they fit really comfortably with people of faith. So, the questionnaires I send out, I ask fund managers to complete, and then I upload them. So, I don't write the stuff for them. The text that you see on my database has been written by fund managers. Okay, so it's not got my opinions on it, as you would get with some research houses. If I find a mistake, I'll go and check it, obviously. But so this has come direct from fund managers. Just summing up then. There's a statement there, I will put these slides on my website, I'll put everything I can up on, on the site as soon as I can. But basically what Fund Econ Market does is to give people a process to work through. People can have their own opinions, they can adapt it however they like, it's absolutely fine. It's free to use, it's sponsored by fund managers, which means hopefully I can keep it free to use. You fill in the questionnaire, you generate a report, that's your audit trail sorted, that's your, your sitting in front of your client bit sorted. It's research, it's, as, it's, it's the best I can come up with. If anyone's got recommendations for progress, where I go next, absolutely great. But I must say the feedback I've had on this so far has been phenomenal. Um, who, who tends to, to be your target for, I mean, it's as it's a of views, but actually who's looking at the website? Is it retail investors, is it private people, is it people It's like a real mix. Yeah. So my, my market when I launched it, and, and my market now is financial advisors, I've always worked with that phase. Um, and obviously increasingly you've got DFM people, you've got journalists, you've got, um, I've been speaking to research people from networks, I know that a couple of those are using it now. Um, the, the, the spread of people is enormous. I had a phone call yesterday from a massive consumer facing magazine that sells about a million copies that want me to write an article on this for them and I'm thinking, no, it's written for IFAs, but actually they've offered me an amazing deal because um, so I'm thinking the, client, the people that are looking at it might turn out to be clients more often. But I don't mind that. I've got a find advisor list on there. There's only a few IFAs on there. I haven't pushed it too hard. Um, but Richard and Julian are both on there. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to let whoever use it wants to because I want to raise awareness of this. And I don't think we've got time to be too precious about that kind of thing. I think, given what I said in the opening bit with climate change, etc., I think we've got a massive challenge. Faster we can get people investing in line with their opinions, reflecting how they feel, the things they care about, 
and looking at the opportunities because these you know, these funds offer some brilliant opportunities as the world changes you know, the opportunities will shift and the more I can shine a light on this area and help people to be open and transparent and pull it all together better I think. So before we go into the panel session I'll just leave you with a couple of thoughts. One thing that's always been in my mind, can an IFA, <coughs> can anyone offering investment services to a client really be giving appropriate advice, given that we know so many people care about this stuff, if they're not mentioning it, if they're not giving people the option to just think about it and reflect their views through their fund strategies? How can you then use this area to enhance client experience? Well, the obvious ones are the charities, pensions, etc. But honestly, I think we're talking regular people. Most of the time, I think we're talking people like you and I not necessarily extreme, haven't devoted their careers to it, but actually think, you know what, it's nice to have the option of this. Let's go 10%, 25%, 50%, whatever, into these funds. That's acceptable too, who cares? That's fine, just put a dip a toe in the water if you want. Um, and then, of course, people like new recruits and ha helping our face businesses as well. Bringing new recruits into it, women, trust issues, that's the big thing I learnt on in my CRI piece I wrote recently was, you know, we've got issues of trust in this industry, and I really think this is part of the solution. The of the is part of the solution. So, the way to start off is by fact finding questionnaires, asking clients, open the door. And I think people will find that they're pushing on an open door with this for a lot of times. If someone isn't interested, that's fine too. But I think a lot more people are interested than we realise. So, my contact details are there. As I say, these slides will be on the site. It's terrible. It's going to come out so well in the video if you can play that clip. Um, so, without further ado, I'll, I'll, I suppose quickly, has anyone got any burning questions on that? Because obviously, this is my passion, you can all talk to me anytime. You've all got my details, but are there any immediate questions before we lead into the panel? No? Okay. In which case, can I please ask one person from each of the fund management groups um, to come and join me at the front, maybe drag a chair up if there 